This is one of the most important sections that is required for oxygen conservation today in this country. And this section is about all about the oxygen winning protocol. Now I'm not a medico, but obviously uh, when we work into the oxygen audits, we understand all of this. And I'm going to try, try to put it in a layman's language so every doctor, every nurse, every paramedical staff and every biomedical engineer understands this most important section that is the oxygen winning protocol. Now what does this oxygen winning protocol say? Each state, each country has its own standard but by and large what we follow here is the patient if he is maintaining at 92% SpO2 is good. Now yes there is a SpO2 and there is a FiO2 and then there is the PO2 and there is the automatic biogas analyzer. So I am not going to do too much of com complexities for the common person to understand we will refer it as SpO2. While I am sure my medical friends would understand the differences in all of them and at the right point know which kind of O2 level to check. So SpO2, first of the most important step which are missed by the most of the hospitals in India is using an oximeter which also has SpO2. It is having a respiratory rate mechanism to a mechanism to check RR, respiratory rate and a mechanism to check the pulse. Now what we should understand over here is that if you use a very very cheap oximeter there are a lot of fluctuations and in the long run it could be very very costly for you and it can make a lot of difference to the patient also. Thus use a very very good quality of oximeter is the fundamental foundation on which the oxygen winning protocol is based. Correct measurement of oxygen levels I would say. So beyond the measurements for the patients on the ventilators in the ICUs there has to be a periodic checking of ABG being done and this is important to establish their PO2 levels to establish, uh, establish at what level the oxygen delivery mechanism has to be set to the patient. Now let us look what is it here. So you we all have know and heard that there is a hypoxia there is lack of oxygen and there is the hyperoxia. There is a lot of oxygen given to patient can do permanent damage to his lungs to his eyes and other organs. It's an essential drug. It's dangerous to give too much of oxygen. So we have to give the oxygen at the right LPM that is the liter per minute. And this is the essential adjustment which can be done on the flow meter that is available at the oxygen points. Most of the flow meters in the normal oxygen beds support from 0 to 15 liter per minute of delivery. And the patient in the triage area the, you should establish at what level of delivery is optimum for this patient to maintain his SpO2 levels above 92% constantly and not allow them to fall below 92% but not above 94%. This is a good range uh, so that the patient doesn't have hyperoxia. And you try to maintain and stabilize the patient here and set the LPM increase or decrease as per the demand. Every two hours, measure, chat out, check, shall I decrease the oxygen, shall I increase the oxygen and keep the patient in this range. This is the simplest way you can achieve and save around 30% of your oxygen. Of course, there are more complex things in the ventilator settings like increasing the PIP, reducing your oxygen delivery mechanism reducing the LPM flow of the ventilator. Now there are a lot of clinical things which get involved. So I don't want to set it as a parameters. It is a discretion of the treating physician, treating doctor on what call he has to take. But yes, there are points where you can really increase the PIP, reduce the LPM and have the same effect on the patient. I would really love that my friends in the medical field will surely come out with a detailed video on this section and I appeal for, to them for the so. But now in this section, we'll deal with increasing PIP, decreasing the LPM, setting optimum FiO2, 
if you there is no improvement by significantly pumping the oxygen then you should stabilize the patient at by stepping down a little and checking that way you know that the patient is not going bad and is not improving and long term may require to be on the ventilator so this way if you establish proper oxygen winning protocol and monitor continuously and in the next part b we are going to look at many more techniques how to have this oxygen winning protocol uh, established and run properly into the hospitals thank you